Hello there and welcome to Workshop 1138. I'm Robin and today I'm going to be looking at this 1992 play school Teddy Ruxpin. As you can see the cassette player is playing but there's no animation operating the eyes and mouth. So today we're going to be using screwdrivers, an assortment of blades, hot melt glue gun, and here are the replacement rubber bands. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly which size I'm going to be using just yet. Uh, also we've got some string, some isopropyl alcohol and a piece of kitchen towel um, for soaking up any spills which is always handy. So I started by already removing the screws from his back. There are six round there and there's another two hidden up here by his neck. So I've taken those out uh, remove the cassette and I've already disconnected all of the leads. Now if we have a look at the back here we've got um, these two which connectors which connect to the servo motors in the head and we've got a separate connector down here which powers the speaker. So I've put a cloth down just to make sure I don't scuff up Rookspin's nose. Okay, we need to open up the material in the back of the head, uh, right up this seam, up to about three quarters of the way up. So first of all I'm going to remove the tape, then I'm going to cut the thread. There we go, at the bottom and then start to unpick it all the way up the back of the head. So now we peel the fur forward over the front of the face and you'll notice now that the neck actually slots in with this little black plastic black plastic piece into a slot in the neck. Okay, so the only thing that's holding it on now is we have a face plate on the front. Um, and well we can see this, so we've got a clip at the top and we've got two clips at the bottom, one of which has already come off and I'm just gently going to prise that apart and hopefully now we'll lift out the front of Mr Ruxpin's face Okay, so we need to now get the foam off so just gently peel back at the edges, it shouldn't be stuck all over it's only in a few places. Just work your way around gently. And we'll be sticking this back at the end with hot melt glue. go. So now we need to unscrew his head. We should have four screws. There are two in the neck at the base. One at the top and another one over here at the back. Now we need to remove the, both the top and bottom pieces of the mouth um, in order for the two halves of the head to separate properly. 
So this top jaw is glued on and I don't know if you can see the line running to my finger along on the inside but that is where I'm going to try and get a screwdriver in and try and gently prise these two pieces apart. I don't know if you can see in there how it clips on but all we have to do is make sure that it gets clipped back with a little dab of glue in there uh, to reapply it afterwards. There's also a little bit of glue just around the front on the fabric here just to keep the front of the mouth on. Let's try and take that off without ripping anything. So this one was quite stubborn, but there we go. I'm hoping the bottom jaw will be slightly easier. This actually broke on the other one I tried this on. So I'm going to try and exercise a little bit more care this time. But hopefully... on the way. We don't have to fetch this all the way off. All I need to be able to do is to get clearance for these two halves to pull apart. So, there we go. Now, there'll be a few belts inside, and these are all going to fall apart. I'll just pull back a little bit wider when this comes apart. There we go, and we have a spring that's attached to the, that eye that's hooked onto the plastic. I'm just going to use a screwdriver to dislodge that. There we go. So those are our two halves. And the first thing I notice is that most of the bands have lost their elasticity. So there's hardly any stretch in them at all. And they've mostly gone sort of fairly almost like plastic um, and they've adopted the shape <laughs> that they were wrapped around the pulleys with so those definitely need replacing first of all I'm going to clean around all the grooves on these pulleys and I'm going to do that using some string soaked in isopropyl alcohol
So let's take a look at the sizing for the bands that were removed. We've got two which were roughly the same size and this one which is slightly larger than those other two. Now this was the one that was the connection to the motor and these others were just wrapped around the other pulleys. Um, because these are old bands and have obviously been stretched um, as far as they're going to go and then have solidified um, I'm going to swap them for bands where a little bit of stretch is involved to get them to the same size so for this one I'm going to fit a 35 millimeter band and for these two I'm going to use 33 millimeter bands and that's the 33 millimeter diameter uh, the whole mechanism is quite clever in its operation from the point of view of we've got one motor and we're driving two mechanical uh, things. We've got the eyes, which if I hold this spring down, uh, are operated by something that knocks that lever up. And at the same time, we've got another lever here, which operates the mouth. And that's performed by this section in the other half. So. The eyes um, are operated by this piece and this piece is the thing that presses down in order to operate the mouth. So one of the things we need to do is when we put all this back together is to make sure that our eyes are, have that lever up out of the way and this one also, the mouth, probably it would be good to keep the mouth open to keep that out of the way and we need to make sure that these sections here are in the right position to be sort of in between the two. So I have my trusty lithium grease, white lithium grease, um, and I've just applied it to a couple of the places where I've cleaned some of the original grease off, uh, some there, and a little bit on the spindle here. We seem to have some fluff off the cotton bud. Let's remove that. So we're not using much, we're just putting a little tiny coating on there. It's time for reassembly. Now this is going to get quite difficult and awkward and fiddly, so um, I've done a number of steps in order to try and um, make things easier to start with. First of all, we've got these two pieces of black plastic uh, for the neck, which I've pushed into position and I've tacked, the wi tacked those into position and also the wires using some hot melt glue. So at the point where the two halves go together, we know that they're going to come out of the right place and they're not going to get trapped. We also need to make sure that these two levers are held far apart so that the two paddles, which are on this side, um, are sort of positioned in between these two levers. So I've dribbled some hot melt glue down just, to, uh, just in the bottom of the eye while I was holding the eye shut. That has uh, secured that, so that will hold that one lever up. In order to hold this other lever down, I'm going to use uh, a rubber band. And at the point where the two halves are together, we'll just cut the rubber band and, and pull the loose piece away. Uh, that pillar there is going to be threaded through that pulley and into that hole and the pulley which is on that pillar there um, the pillar itself is going to push into that hole and we at the very last stage I need to hook that rubber band onto the end of that pulley so in order to do that um, I've got this which is a I've, it's a piece of garden wire that I've, I've bent up using some pliers um, and I've just uh, sanded, sanded the ends slightly to make them less sharp so I'm less likely to damage the rubber, uh, rubber belt in the process. But at the point where the two halves are almost together, um, I'm going to hold it in position, I'm going to grab this um, tool and I'm going to use that to hook the belt onto the pulley. and then can remove it. And one of the main problems is that this pulley here actually needs to be held 
in that position there. I don't know if you can see through the hole that that is the hole you can see through there that the spindle is, needs to go through there so that needs to be held in that position which is obviously a little bit tricky because we've got all the tension provided by these belts so what I propose and I might take this rubber band off just to make this a little bit easier to do uh, is you take a thin piece of string and we're going to thread it round round there like that and then there's a little slot in the plastic here and I can't actually see any other reason for that slot to exist other than for what we're about to do which is I'm going to position that over over the hole where the spindle goes and at that point if I hold that piece of string in place and I might have to fiddle around slightly to reposition it that's good that is now in the correct position so if I refit that band we should now be ready to slide the two halves together so here goes wish me luck so that's going in there can we see where the other one is that's going in there so I'm going to push the front almost together and that should sort of hold itself now and we need to use the tool in through the back here to try and hook that belt which I don't know if you can see onto that bit of pulley and I'm going to try and avoid uh, sort of catching it on the on that rod just in case there's any grease on there you probably won't be able to see what I'm doing and you may be able to see now that that belt is on the pulley you can now push the two halves together uh, you might have to just move the bottom bit of that jaw out of the way but that is almost done um, we've still got this spring for the eye now I've left that out out of the way uh, if I write the glue gun bond that I made here I'm hoping that we can just poke this back into position and there is a little slot in the plastic for it to go in and now we remove that piece of string and if I get the scissors I think we've cut that uh, that rubber band I think everything there is free to move properly let's just break that last little bit of uh, hot melt glue from there And let's fetch over the rest of Ruxpin's body so we can plug this back in and we can see if it works. Um, I've also got his nose over here which I can clip back on, it will need gluing back into place obviously but I can sort of clip that back on for now. wanted to go in search of new and wonderful things. Then, one day, we found an old treasure map. The treasure was supposed to be hidden in the far-off land of Grundo. And so we left our homeland of Rilonia and set out on our great adventure. <laughs> As you can see, 
Grubby does have a lot of feet to worry about. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but it might have something to do with this mouth being a little bit misaligned because this pin was... Uh, that's got a much more positive action now. Oh. Let's give that a go. We decided to camp there overnight. The next morning, Grubby's feet were better, and we continued on our journey. That was the day we met Newton Gimmick. Oh, <laughs> hello there. <laughs> My name is Newton Gimmick, but everyone just calls me Gimmick. <laughs> I'm an inventor. Oh, yes, indeed. We discovered that Gimmick is a marvelous inventor. So we take the foam piece that covers Teddy's head, figure out exactly where we're going to position it, and think about there, and then we're going to glue it into place, and I'm going to use my hot melt glue gun. And then be very, very careful not to burn your hands with this because it really does hurt. <laughs> Just need a few more. Dabs along the edge there. Got that on the edge of the foam. By mistake. That's looking quite good. And we'll just hold that in place for a second. to put those wires through. Very careful about putting Teddy's nose and mouth through the front, front of that face plate. Might actually be easier if I unclip that nose again in order to do that. And there's a slot in the white plastic, I don't know if you can see there, for the those neck pieces to push right back in. And we need to get the face plate located against those clips. There's one at the top and two at the bottom, which I'm guessing might be The correct positions by now. There's a little bit of material trap there. Why are you not going back together? Might be something trapped.
hot melt glue didn't seem to be um, strong enough to stick that so I might have to go for something a bit stronger. Let's remove all the all the gunk I've put in here. I might have to take it apart to do that. I've decided to glue that joint with epoxy resin um, and because of that I need to make sure that I can reattach Teddy Ruxpin's top jaw properly with everything already in place because this step is not going to be reversible without breaking something. So let's mix up some resin. I don't need much. You are of course supposed to do this in a well ventilated area. Uh, and the resin I'm using at the moment should take about five minutes to set. So I should be able to hold everything in place with my hands until it's done. Um, let's try and not get that on the rest of his fur. And you can see that that resin is set properly now because it's changed colour. And we're clipped in all the way around and glued in on that corner. So I think it's time now to we'll cut the original thread away. And I'm going to stitch his, pull the fur back and stitch his head back together with this, which is, uh, I'm actually going to use red. Um, this is the stuff I use on the other on the other 1985 rook spins, uh, and this is slightly thicker than a regular cotton. It looks to me like there are sort of natural folds in this fur where it was. Uh, it must have been folded underneath on itself originally before it was stitched together. You can sort of see now as well why, uh, with this tapping on the table, why I haven't fitted Teddy's nose yet. <laughs> so I'm working my way along that seam with a zigzag, and I'm sort of going in with the needle through with with it through the back, as in the bit you can't you won't be able to see when it gets folded inside, uh, and coming out to the bit you can see each time.
I'll try and finish this by keep going through the same bit of thread to make a bit of a knot. And you might spot that there's two little holes in the fabric. And they correspond to the two little holes in the plastic that we've got there. So by the time we've fitted this and put those screws through, that should go through the material, possibly not in the same place. We're at the point now of fitting these cables again. So that one's for the speaker. And we've got a three position and a two position, or a three pole and two pole. Uh, connector at the top here. So when it comes to putting the back back on you need to make sure that the fabric on these top couple of corners it would normally tend to overlap the uh, that socket where the screw is going to go. We just move the fabric out of the way before we put any of the screws in. Uh, I'm going to do the two ones in the neck last. That way we'll know exactly the position they'll be held in. Time to refit the back door. Um, on the one I've got here, it just sort of pushes in and has a screw to secure the batteries in place. And so at last the airship flew perfectly. We said goodbye to Leona. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, everyone. And we were off on our way to Grundo in search of adventure and maybe to find a treasure. Grubby and I had met two new friends, Newton Gimmick and Leota the Wood Sprite. And I've realised that I missed a step out. Um, before I put the faceplate back on, um, I should have reattached uh, Teddy's bottom jaw correctly. Now we've got a few, there's a few things I don't know if you can see, but that central pin He's, not, he's firstly not in the correct position and I need to push that back into place, that's better. And I may have left it too late to do this now, particularly being as I've uh, epoxy resin the face plate back on, but that bottom jaw is not quite, uh, has not been quite secured in properly. We'll see how it looks once I've uh, dealt with the top jaw but what I might do as well is I might get a little bit of lithium grease just in these gaps um, to help free this up slightly uh, though it seems it seems fairly free already um, I'm not sure if we can get Teddy's bottom jaw to fit again so I'm just gonna use the hot melt glue to reattach this mouth uh, I'm just going to put a little bit inside there and a bit sort of inside that slot and I think that should do. Because I only very loosely want to tack it in place and I've got to push this right to the back when it goes on. I think that's it. With the mouth back in place, let's see how well Teddy talks now. Stop, stop, stop.
So by the end of this video we've now got a Teddy Ruxpin with working eyes and mouth that can be returned to its owner. Um, thank you very much for watching, I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time on Workshop 1138. This is Robin, signing off for now.